What's up everyone and welcome back to Studio 3B. Today I wanted to go over with you my thoughts on the Monterey Open Core install and why I haven't even attempted it yet and go over some of the reasons why I'm kind of avoiding um, upgrading my Big Sur installation to Monterey. Let's go and start by looking at the Dortania guide. There's been a lot of changes in um, the upgrade to Monterey and a lot of it has to do with hardware support. As usual, they dropped a bunch of symbioses. So for my computer, I would lose the iMac 15X, I believe is what I was using, and I would have to switch to a different symbios. Not, not a completely invalid thing to have to worry about. So Haswell is my architecture, and I would have to use an iMac 17.1, which is fine, but that's a dedicated GPU. So going down to drop GPU hardware, Right at the second item on the list is my GTX 650 Ti. Falls right into the Kepler uh, dropped hardware list. So, you know, that, that was a decent video card for me back in the day. And I've been working all these years since um, as far back as I believe Mountain Lion I started on this uh, Hackintoshing and everything. So, and that's when I got the video card and it's been working since. Uh, now all of a sudden they stop supporting it. So I'm not completely out of luck. I could use the internal GPU on my motherboard, but that's not the most ideal situation. Um, I would rather have a dedicated GPU for better graphics, better performance and things like that. So that leaves me to one option and that's to buy a supported graphics card and install it in my computer. So yes, Kepler GPUs are dropped, supported graphics. As you can see, Nvidia is no longer even supported in Monterey at all. So you have to either go to your internal GPU or go out and shell out the money for an AMD GPU. And if you ever checked on Amazon or any of the other websites like Newegg for an AMD GPU, you will know that they are not cheap. Um, the cheapest ones you could find that I've found are at least $200 and that's for a very small basic graphics card. If you click on any one of the ones that are well supported and you go to their website, let's try the Vega 10. So if I search on Radeon RX Vega series on Amazon and we just go to any, all right, well this one's $170. As a small graphics card, but it looks like it might work. But you can see any any substantial graphics card in that series are well into the you know well over five hundred dollars range, and some of them go well over a thousand dollars if you keep looking for the decent ones. Not only that, they tell you not to use certain brands of AMD graphics cards for lack of support. Okay, if you go to the AMD Buyer's Guide for GPUs, they'll tell you things like for Polaris 10 and 20 series, don't use XFX, PowerColor, HIS, and Vision Tech. Well, XFX is all over the Amazon website, so you have to kind of be careful. You know, I would use like a MSI, that's a, that's a pretty reputable brand, or things like that, AS Rock. So basically I'm backed into a corner shelling out, you know, a substantial portion of the value of a computer just for the graphics card. Uh, when I already have a decent graphics card that works fairly well, it's an Nvidia, but it works really well. That's kind of a bummer. So I'm kind of either stuck a staying on Big Sur or B shelling out the money for, you know, a fairly expensive graphics card. So that's that for the, hardware limitations. I believe that my motherboard is still supported and all the wireless and and everything I have is still supported. So that led me to think um, let's since I'm fairly you know tech savvy so to speak um, let's go back to my Linux and just use Linux as my main operating system. Yeah NVIDIA is well supported there and that was great. I was using Debian for you know, a few weeks or a month or whatever, uh, until I got bored of that and, um, 
And I went a little hardcore and tried uh, FreeBSD, which is even less supported than Linux when it comes to stuff. And that was kind of a nightmare. Uh, Rune was unavailable. Rune's core um, was even unavailable. I mean, I didn't even know how to get that to work. And so then I got the wise intuition to say, well, let's just go to Windows. Um, I know some people have a lot of hard feelings against Windows, but to tell you the truth, everything kind of just works. And that's kind of a nice thing. Even though I am still painted into a corner in the sense that I can't support Windows 11 on my architecture, on the uh, CPU that I have, it does not support the required features that are needed for Windows 11. Windows 10 will be supported, I hear, for like in the next five years or so. So uh, I should be pretty good there. And coming off of like the Linux and even Mac OS world, you know, everything worked just that much easier in Windows. You know, the whole world kind of like, I don't know, 80% of the world uses Windows. So everything kind of nicely works. There's software available for just about everything you want to do. And not only that, it maintains profiles very well. Multiple accounts are able to be used for things like Outlook and Teams. And, you know, not here to sell you on Windows or anything. As a programmer, I realize it's not the most ideal situation to be using Windows. But, you know, for a home uh, computer, I really do think at this point it might just be your best bet to stick with Windows. If you want to go to the Hackintosh route, it can be fairly stable. But you're going to be fighting uphill when it comes to upgrades because they, they seem to be, Apple seems to do away with certain hardware just about every year. And that leaves you painted into a corner when it comes to, um, you know, do I buy more hardware do i buy supported hardware or do i just uh you know d ditch the whole effort altogether and go back to windows um, that's a decision that you're gonna have to make you know on a yearly basis when they do their upgrades uh, you don't not forced into an upgrade you could stick on an old mac os installation for quite some time and it'll be supported but eventually it's going to get phased out eventually you're going to run into more and more legacy issues and you know just be fighting an uphill battle so that's kind of the, the world of technology as it is you know you can't really sit there on your haunches and say you got it figured out eventually an upgrade is going to happen and it's going to break you and you're going to need to shell out a cash either shell out cash in one direction or another or settle for something so um, at this point since i'm not willing to buy a graphics card at this time uh, I went back to Windows and I'm fairly happy with it. I've got uh, everything I need running and you know the nerd in me likes to do the uh, programming and configuration and everything that's like in Linux or creative person in me loves Mac OS for audio visual type mixing audio or doing video editing or things like that but everything is just viable in Windows as well so that's kind of like my little trajectory as I usually go in operating system transitions. I kind of start at Windows, go to like Linux or Mac OS, go all the way out to like FreeBSD and realize nothing's supported. And then I end up just coming right back to Windows uh, years later. I mean, I've been on, like I said, I still have my Big Sur installation. I'm not going to get rid of it. And it's going to be uh, supported for some time, but I'm just not using it right now and I'm just getting more familiar with the Windows operating system again and getting comfortable there. So my plea to you if you're going to be a Hackintosher is start a savings account because you know you're going to end up needing some new hardware someday and uh, save up a little bit at a time. Like if you're going to need a new graphics card for example or say your uh, CPU stops being supported for, for example. I don't know if that's going to happen on some Intel processor someday. I don't know. Hey, I just wanted to know, uh, leave a comment below about your experience with uh, operating system transitions and how much you guys jump from operating system to operating system. How often do you upgrade? How often do you upgrade your software versus how often do you upgrade your hardware? Uh, do you go all in and shell out for, like for the best of the best system at the time period and hang on to that for dear life for the next 10 years? 
or do you guys continuously upgrade your hardware every year or so? You know, tell me your system of um, thought about how do you maintain your computer over time. So kind of curious to know where you guys are with that. Click the like button if you like this commentary and uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel for more things audio and tech.